This is the plaintiff, Ronald Curzer. He says his daughter was walking their beloved Bishal Laza Opso named King one day, and the defendant's dog got underneath his vest, charged and attacked. The defendant told him she'd pay for the vet bills. She's ignored him ever since, and that's just not right. He's suing for triple vet bill damages in the amount of $593.19. is the defendant, Angela Owens. She says this lawsuit's hogwash because the plaintiff's dog was not on a leash. The plaintiff's dog was up against her fence, desperately trying to get to her dog, Mikey, and did. She says her dog was bleeding, his leg was injured in the fracas. He had to have surgery and didn't make it and passed away. How dare this man sue her when his dog was at fault? She's accused of not having a strong enough fence. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,352.91 for vet bills and surgery. All parties, please use your right hands. You see, they come to order, please. Living in San Antonio. Thank you, Douglas. Ronald Curser? Yes. You are suing Angela Owens for $593.19, uh, three times the vet bills you incurred. Why, th why are you suing for three times what you're entitled to? Uh, requesting treble damages because. because? The defendant volunteered to assume responsibility for the vet bill and then never paid the bill and never came back and explained that uh, there was no payment forthcoming. All right. uh, you're suing for, uh, for that, and then you are counterclaiming against him $2,352.91, the amount for your vet bills. Okay. Let me hear from you first. What happened? I was walking the dog. Okay. So you're the daughter? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So I was walking the dog down a private road so he wouldn't get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. And um, their fence, um, I was told their fence was cut by a lawnmower. And the fence, uh, the dog walked through the fence and the fence went like this. Um, so it's like a whole panel of the fence just flipped just up? Flipped up and he walked out. And that Does is, anybody have a picture of the actual fence? I have lots of pictures. Is this the fence we're talking That's about? That's my fence. And if you'll see on the bottom, you'll see that I have a chain link fence around the entire yard, and I have a lot of pictures here of it, there's chicken wire and staked in wood, um, like decorative, I guess it would be for a garden. Okay, who was the first one out when stuff was happening? I was. You were. Okay, when you came out, tell me what you the saw. The defendant's daughter was standing by the bench that's in that picture. That's, that's her? Yes. Okay. The bench that's in that picture, very far from the fence. Okay. In her hand, she had a leash. The okay. stakes, you can see, were pulled. So that would have taken him a little while to do. Mikey had a spinal stroke. Who's Mikey, your dog? dog? He had a spinal stroke in 2017 where he suffered permanent paralysis in his hind legs. I have notes from his neurologist. He can't charge. He couldn't run. He drags himself like okay. a mermaid. But I have pictures of it. I could show you. He was incapable of What's your of premise, running. that your dog got out, but that she could have stopped your dog from getting first, out or first, stopped the damage from occurring? This is important that I should say first. What he forgot to tell you is I've met him before. I've met him before because in December of 2017, I went into my backyard, okay, on my patio in a chair, was sitting Mr. Kurzer, his dog off of a leash, doing laps. I was actually on the phone with my sister, who I was like, there's a strange man in my backyard. Called the police, she's saying, so, like, I could take him. I'll talk to him myself. So I ask him what he's doing there. He tells me his dog often gets off of the leash and he could not catch him. So I hope you don't mind. He's got to run around the yard for a little bit to tire himself out. Okay, does that sound familiar? Absolutely not. No recollection of that ever happening. No <clears throat> recollection of ever meeting uh, the plaintiff. This is the first time I've ever seen Are you a, a, an attorney? No, I'm not. Are you a retired Excuse attorney? Me. No. Okay. Uh, so as an aside, you tell me this man was on your property a year earlier. Now tell me about what you saw, which was my original question, when you came out that day. So he was basically almost all the way through to the other side of the fence. He got out and he did his crawl and her white dog was circling him because he cannot run. He can't run. So did your dog get all so the way out? As he did. Okay. But he didn't make it past that wood because okay. he can't, he couldn't. Okay, so what did he do as far out as he did make it? What did he do? He would do the same thing he would do with the What puppy. did he do? What did your dog he do? Did your dog bite that dog? He did not bite the dog. At her, all? Her, not at all. Not at all. He couldn't catch the dog if he wanted to. All right. 
Uh, according to you, what happens? Well, first of all, the woman I saw okay. is not this woman. Okay. The woman that did help me, I was calling, please stop. Um, I was screaming, stop, stop, and my dog uh, responds to stop, you know, and he was frozen while the dog was on top of him, um, attacking him. Okay. This was a ferocious dog. He was biting different parts of King's body. He was on top of King on different positions. So your dog's on a leash when the attack happens? Yes. Okay. So you let go of the leash because you're hoping your dog can run away. Correct. I kept saying, stop, stop. And he, and the dog, King was listening to me, but the other dog wasn't. And then I started screaming, please help me. Please, someone help me. Please, someone help me. And the, the woman came running out of the house and said, get off him. And the dog, big dog get got off. off him. Oh, ordered the dog to get off. Yes. All right. uh, you don't think that's her who came out? That's not the woman. You're positive? Maybe she um, cleans up nicely. Who knows? I well, look very, she had people look at me all the time in Miami and say, you don't look like you. I know exactly what they're saying when they say that. <laughs> yes. Well, she had light brown hair. She had pigtails. She, nope. she was a lot taller. And all right. She was well, lot... all right. So whoever comes, somebody comes out she and hot, says, though. get off him. <laughs> and what else? And she, she said, uh, is he okay? And I said, he has a lot of bites, and we just tried to get out of there. We, I took him to the house, and my father cleaned him up. Okay, so let's talk. This is where you come in, you see the dog, and do you have pictures of how I the dog photos, looked that photos, day? Photos, yeah, the dog has abrasions on his back leg, and okay. I cleaned off some of the blood, and he had bite marks on his neck and on his head. Okay, are these the pictures? Yes. All right. So I guess I'm seeing a little bit of red there. Yeah, I'm right, you it. see the red there on the bottom yeah. by, the, by the leg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right, so what, you eventually take the dog to the vet. After, after I cleaned him up, we went, I wanted my daughter to show me where the incident happened. We didn't even get that far because uh, we were confronted by a gentleman in a Jeep who identified himself as the uh, defendant's boyfriend, and he at that point volunteered uh, to pay the medical bills, told okay. us, take him to so the vet. So that encounter was pleasant. They're very actually pleasant. seeking you uh, out to very pleasant. say, I'm uh, sorry, uh, you know, whatever you need, yeah. whatever. This okay. gentleman identified himself as Dimitri, boyfriend of the defendant. Do you have a boyfriend named Dimitri? I do, and I have a statement from him as okay. well. Okay, and then once you take I, the dog to the vet, I took there's to a very the, reasonable the bill of $197. Okay, I notified the defendant uh, of the vet bill, and the defendant told me she was coming over to pay me, and this would be Exhibit A. Here is the text messages from the defendant telling me. Do you just me, watch a lot of court TV or trials or? Sometimes. <laughs> so she says she's going to pay, and then what happens? Defendant never showed up. Okay. Defendant so then, do, what, then when she doesn't show up, what do you do? I notified the defendant that in the event that she is not going to honor the obligation, that I would file a small claims. Matter. Okay. So are those texts in your phone? Yes. I'll, I'll, Hi, I'll, this is Angela Owens. Would that be you? Are you Angela Owens? I am. I wanted to drop off the check for 191 this morning. Just needed your address. He gives you the address. It's 197.73. He says, please advise what time, what time are you coming by? You say, I'm sorry, what is your last name? And would you be able to provide me with a copy of the bill for my records? And he says a minute later, I can drop off the bill. I can leave it in your mailbox. And then three months later, you respond, I didn't hear back from you this afternoon, so I am assuming you did not go ahead and drop the suit. So apparently you guys must have had some kind of discussions between then. What were the discussions? Let me hear from you first. I mailed her the copy of the vet bill. Right. And then uh, I called her several times and never got any responses. Uh, and then I, I believe I let, I let her know that uh, I was going to move forward with a small claims matter if I didn't get paid. Okay. So now let's talk about what's happening. How did anything change? Um, from the day you were willing, because I saw the text, to pay the 197 in October, what is it that changed? What changed was as soon as I saw who he was. He's lying to you about not being in my yard before. I just and don't understand how that matters. You witness it, yourself. You're the best witness against you when you tell me how your dog got out. My dog is And playful. then I'm seeing the dog, their dog, with blood on it. And then I'm seeing, how show, me the vet, show me the vet report, please. This is the vet bill. How do we know it's his dog's blood and not mine? My dog is dead. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. I'm sorry that your dog is dead. By the way, can I ask you a question? Why weren't you saying all that when you texted him saying, we will pay for your bill, when Dimitri because went over there and said, we'll pay for your, your bill, please have your dog checked out? Because Ron, Ron Kurzer has a dog who he has, is always off the leash in people's yards. He's notorious for it. That dog was not on a leash, okay? And she stayed in the beginning. She brought the dog there because she didn't want him to get hit by a car. Well, if he was on a leash... Why would you be getting him by a car? What ended up happening? Your dog had had some kind of spinal surgery. Your dog scooted in f out of the fence. I'm, I'm very sorry to hear this. I because know we love our pets so like their children. 
but tell no, me what happened. No, we would happened. take turns. We would use this. We would wrap it around the lower part of him. You could sit down, baby. I, 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 I know exactly what that's for. I understand. I don't need he to see the video. Walk, I've had dogs that have had this He couldn't walk issue. without this. Mm -hmm. When he went under the fence, or, or get, it's not a dog bite, it's a puncture, which I have a lot of pictures for you to look at. Okay. Which the notes- The puncture from the fence? Yeah. And it got infected, and we had many surgeries, and After he died. That, so you, you brought, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm sorry, son. And he's sitting here lying to you. Okay, I understand. But now, let's talk about what happened with your dog. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Here's a question. You, dogs that are, have paralyzed back legs that are on this kind of scooter, um, are they able to um, come up on another dog and bite him? Yeah, definitely. They're not really paralyzed, so. Well, no, no, they are, they, they really are paralyzed in the back legs. Um, the question is, you know, the other dogs can maneuver better. Yeah, absolutely. Even if they're paralyzed, they still have an aggressive nature. There's nothing that stops them from using their front paws to attack another animal and can probably hurt them just as bad as a dog that's not paralyzed. Okay, okay, going inside the courtroom. What did the dog die of? That's what I'm An infection from that day? From the fence, not, not anything having to do with the cysts. But it, it cut open the cyst. The cyst, like, a, it's a hanging kind of thing. So it snagged on it. I, I think what happened here, this is so sad, because what I think that what happened here is that there's an acknowledgement of fault on your part until you realize how much more it cost you. No, absolutely and not. And I don't mean I don't mean how much more it cost you in dollars. Absolutely I not. I mean how much more it cost you in that you lost your pet. Um, you know, how much more it cost you in human suffering is what I mean. Now, you have a counterclaim against them for $2,352.91, which I assume are the charges for the care of your pet before your pet ended up expiring. And in your mind, they should have to pay that why. What was their fault that your pet got out from underneath what's, the fence? What's very unfortunate is that you don't know the family, that you're not familiar with. This is something they do. They're what notorious is something for they this. Do? They're what notorious is... for going into people's yards. They're notorious for false complaints. If you okay. Google- Stop a second. Can you show me a false complaint they made where they were found to have been falsifying something? The police department would not issue it. Okay, I so you the have nothing to show is. me to, to buttress anything that you're saying. No, I don't. Okay, but let me ask you a question because I think that things got really, really nasty, and even the police were involved. There's a um, lot. Because your vet bill you're counterclaiming for, but there's other stuff that ended up happening there. Tell me about that. He drives by my house constantly. I mean, I go out to take the garbage out. What are the chances that I'm going to see you pull, pull over, drive by? He's constantly by my house. Um, and doing what though? The other day, he gave me the middle finger. There's a statement from my daughter, which is the most disturbing. When she stayed home sick from school, I actually got your fired daughter? from my job. How old is your daughter? 15, because the phone calls didn't stop. He I'm harassed sorry, you me. You said you got fired from your job? He wouldn't stop calling me. OK. Just How did it get me? this bad? Why not just pay the 197 because and then get rid of it? Because he's crazy. I've come home, and all my Christmas directions, decorations are in the middle of my lawn, slashed. I find dog poop all over the place in front of my house. My dogs don't go to the bathroom in front of my house, on my steps, on my walkway. Um, Did you do that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did you do that? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, it's not funny. I mean, I don't well, know why I you're mean, laughing. Absolutely not. All right, not. so go These on. Did you call the police when that happened? I went to the police department about it. Um, I mean, I wish you would take a moment to even call them and say, tell them their name. They'll tell you. They'll tell you he does if, this. If there's something you want me to see from the police department, you would have to show it to me. There was, I don't remember what it was called, but there was something I had to file and I didn't have enough time to get the anything that would have been made public. And did then you when witness I, them doing anything with this? I didn't, but I'm telling you, it's not very. Okay. Ms. Owens, um, as I've explained several times, I'm sorry for the loss of your pet. However, nothing that you're telling me, um, I, I realize you suspect that he put poo on your front porch. You suspect that he's the one who cut up your stuff. I presume that the police are telling you the same thing I'm saying, which is that you need to have proof of that. And since the only issue in front of me is whether or not your dog got out and you testified that your dog got out, and I see that this dog needed an antibiotic, I know that your boyfriend represented on your behalf. Please take your dog to the vet. We'll pay for it. I see that you texted him. I'll pay for it. You're going to need to pay for it. No, we're done. We're done. No. Legally speaking, you are wrong, and you're going to pay the 197.73 on their claim against you. I'm not going to treble damage it. There's no reason to do that. And on your counterclaim, zero. That's it. 
So the plaintiff is going to get $197. Ms. Owens, you tell a very interesting story, a compelling mm -hmm. testimony. But the judge explained to, to you why she made her decision. If you knew him and you know this is something that they do, if she took the time, I'm not sure if she even looked at everything that I had. He does this. This is what they do. I mean, the simple fact that she doesn't even remember that's my yard or that it's me, maybe it wasn't even Mikey then. She convinced the judge, and you're going to have to pay. You offered to pay. You said you were going to pay. pay. Right? I didn't offer to pay. I never had a conversation with him about money. Well, the judge said you did. She's wrong. Sorry about that. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Uh, I think the audience, I'm sure, feels for you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Mr. Kurtzer, it's pretty interesting testimony about you and things, apparently, that you do and you say you don't. Uh, Evidently, the woman has su suffered a lot of distress, and the woman is making allegations that lack foundation. I don't know the woman, and evidently the woman is very angry because she lost her pet. Uh, obviously. obviously, now, the damages to her property I have no knowledge of, and the woman produced no evidence which uh, confirms the allegations, and she made uh, horrendous accusations that have no foundation. And you didn't drive by our house? Absolutely and not. Give her the finger? Not. Absolutely okay. not. I'm, All right, sir. I'm a well, professional. Look, okay. The case is over. You got your money. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the judge talked about treble damages. I mean, you've, you may not know that word, but you probably heard the words punitive damages. And what it means is that you punish somebody, or the judge can punish somebody, you know, for willful or malicious conduct by tripling their damages. And in this case, that's the statute. It has to be willful, malicious, something like that. It just never rose to that level. And that will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.